guys, this is so cool. I don't think I've ever seen a naked eye comet before, but right now we're enjoying one. It's back behind the tree. Amazing, it looks like someone took a paintbrush and just made a smudge in the sky. We have the sun slowly starting to rise, so we have twilight incoming. This camera is doing tracked exposures at a high focal length, and I have another camera over there doing a time lapse of this morning. So it's gonna be so cool to share those, but it's absolutely amazing seeing what nature does. I mean, a comet of all things. It seemed like this wasn't even you know talked about at all a week ago, but you never know with comets because all of a sudden they can survive getting close to the sun and really become visible like this. It's, it's so unique. Hey guys, it is Matt here. Super excited because tomorrow morning it's gonna be clear and I'm gonna try to photograph the beautiful comet that is blessing us in the morning sky throughout the next few weeks. So we wanna take advantage of that. Right now it is brightening and it's becoming naked eye. I just did a little bit of planning and the comet's gonna be rising in the northeast. What I'm gonna use to try and shoot the comet tomorrow is gonna to be my Nikon D850 and I'm gonna use the 70 to 200 millimeter lens. That's gonna give me a good bit of range tomorrow and allow me to incorporate some of the landscape in the foreground. The other thing I'm gonna use is a Skywatcher Star Adventure Pro. It's a tracking mount that's gonna let me do longer exposures and not get stars trailing with using such a high magnification lens. Okay guys, so here is the small tracking mount, nice and portable. It is an equatorial design, which means you have a small polar finder scope. And you aim, and you aim this north, and get it polar aligned, which means you can do long tracked exposures because it's gonna counteract the Earth's rotation. Here's the ball head. The camera's gonna sit up on top of this. So for tomorrow, basically what I would do is have this camera and I'm gonna put on top of this ball head tighten everything down once I do the quick polar alignment as I've been getting many requests on how do I locate Comet Neowise in the northern hemisphere so the app I have open right now and that I recommend for easily finding the comet is called Sky Safari so when you open Sky Safari you can click search you can click brightest comets and Neowise is right up here when you click center at the bottom of the screen, it's gonna show you where the comet is located. Now I have the time set to 4.15 in the morning for tomorrow, and your window to view is approximately four to 5 a.m., so you only have one hour. Earlier you are in the night, the better, because the sun rises and it's gonna be brightening the sky. Okay, so really quickly had to ditch the idea of shooting it over downtown just because it was so humid and all the light pollution was just killing it. So I came out to about 20 miles north of the city, just to some farmland here. I set up the system and it's a little bit too bright now, but we got a few shots and definitely want to come back tomorrow or the next day if it's clear. Pretty darn early, but we're giving it a second go tonight at the Comet. I'm hoping that I'm actually getting there earlier enough compared to yesterday. I know going downtown last night was probably not the best decision. I didn't know how bright the Comet was gonna be, so I had to hustle, scratch going downtown, head all the way up north to get into the country yesterday, and was happy I did because I actually got to see the comet, take some photos. So 
We're heading back to that spot out in the country north of Pittsburgh and gonna try to do some tracked exposures of the comet. Right now it's clear, it's hot, it's humid though, so we'll see how the actual transparency is gonna be like. All right guys, we got here an hour earlier than we did yesterday morning and we have a tree in the foreground on the hill and it's still clear out, so we're gonna set up the tracking mount and I'm gonna set up another system here to do a time lapse. So let's go ahead and get everything set up. All right, for the time lapse, I'm gonna use my Nikon D750 and the 24 to 70 millimeter lens. It's gonna give a nice wide angle view. The intervalometer is gonna allow us to take exposures continuously. All right, I'm gonna try to take exposures that are four seconds long with a one second interval in between, so there's a five second interval. Okay, now I'm gonna polar align the Skywatcher tracking mount and get the other camera set up for some higher magnification shooting. All right, we've used the polar finder to get it polar aligned. Now we're gonna put on the next camera. All right, for this next shoot, I'm gonna use the Nikon 70 to 200 millimeter lens with a modified Nikon Z6. Okay, so we have the time-lapse running in the background. I have the 70 to 200 millimeter lens on the tracking mount set up. It's almost 4.15, so we're just waiting for the comet to rise and we have Sky Safari opened up and we see that it's just on the horizon starting to rise. So it looks like we're hopefully in good position here to shoot the comet when it rises within the next half hour. Okay guys, this is awesome right now. The comet has risen above the trees and it's looking absolutely beautiful. There it is, just in the center of the frame. But there's the comet. Wow. We're gonna take a handful more exposures. All right guys, well, that is it. It is getting too bright and the tail of the comet is starting to wash out in photos. So I think we're gonna call it and head back home. All right, crazy morning. We tried for the third time. Came out this time with a telescope to get a little bit higher focal length, magnify the comet. Savannah was shooting some on her phone, looked awesome. But we lucked out with just a little break in the clouds right now, and there's just enough to catch it before the sky got a little bit too bright.